All right, about a week ago, I got this catalog here in the mail. This is a Berean Christian Stores catalog, and I was flipping through it, and uh, there's very little in here that I'd ever order. But I get back to the Bible section, and it comes out, and it says, you can see here, it says, New Bible Translation, the Common English Bible. And, of course, it goes into the whole thing there of, uh, you know, oh, well, we, we wanted one that was readable, you know, for the modern reader. But yet, you know, we wanted readability without sacrificing accuracy. You know, yeah, okay. And I'm going to show you in this video that this new version uh, sacrifices accuracy, okay? They don't even follow their, the Nestle's text anymore. Okay, these new feminist Bibles that they're coming out with, the TNIV, the New Revised Standard Version, the Common English Bible, uh, they're feminist, and they depart from even the Nestle's text. Not only are they not Receptus Bibles, but they're also not even Nestle's Bibles. Okay, they're, they're just, they, they make the Word of God say whatever they want now. And some of the readings in this thing are absolutely atrocious. So, first of all, I went to the website and did a little bit of research there. But I also ordered one, and I got a lot of marks in the back of this thing. I'm going to do a separate video showing some of the perversions in here. Just ridiculous scripture perversion. But I went to their website, okay? And the first thing I did was I watched, they had this ridiculous little propaganda video attacking the King James Bible, not by name, of course, uh, but they attacked the King James Bible. So let's look at a couple parts of this video. So you were comparing the Bible to books that, that you read at school. What, what did you mean by that? Well, in English class, we're reading uh, Shakespeare. And uh, I hate reading that. I do. It's because nobody talks like that. You don't talk like that. I don't talk like that. So uh, if somebody were to hand me a Bible, and I were to open it up and read, And thou shalt gather the spoil of it into the midst of the streets, thereof wherein thou shalt this and that. I mean, I understand where the, you know, that's the language of the day, but I don't get it. And I'm not going to read that. I'm not. Our Bible study is pretty diverse. Um, we have people at different places in their faith. But when I'm leading a Bible study, I kind of need everybody to be on the same page you know, for everyone to really get what I, what I just read. And in my opinion, for that to happen, we need a Bible that talks like we talk, you know, just everyday language. I just, I just think it would make my job so much easier. <laughs> he has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity right. in place of the two. That was kind of hard to read. I would love nothing more than for us to be able to sit down and read the Bible together every day, but I haven't found a version that spoke to a five-year-old and a teenager and me as a 40-year-old. I, I don't know that there's one out there. That's what I want for my congregation. I want them to get to a place where they love to study God's Word. And I realize they don't have all the, the resources I do, but if we could just at least share the same translation, I feel we could study together and really dig in together, and not just on Sunday. So I'm just, I, I need to find a version that works for everyone, a version that as a pastor, I can trust. Common problems deserve an uncommon solution. I can truly understand this. So far, I'm impressed. Can I have this one? This is nice. The answer is on the way. Coming in the fall of 2010. What a bunch of propaganda. I mean, give me a break. Getting little kids, you know, actors and stuff. Oh, I can't read. I can't understand. That's kind of hard. Oh, oh, 
oh, we're studying Shakespeare in school and I, I hate it. Oh, man, and if I had to have a Bible that said, thus saith the Lord, boy, I wouldn't even read it. It's ridiculous. Now, if you've seen my real Bible version issue exposed, you know the basic premise that I try to get through to people. The real Bible version issue is not, well, we're trying to make more readable, more understandable Bibles. That's not it. It's the Counter-Reformation. It is a Jesuit-led movement, agenda, to replace God's Word for the English-speaking people. This book right here is what made the Catholic Church lose their power over the people of Europe. Okay, over the world, really. I mean, they were controlling everything. And this book dethroned them. This book is what created America and England, what created our freedom, our religious freedom. This book. Don't give me this stuff about Greek philosophers and the age of reason and all this other bull. This is the book right here, okay? This is what brings religious freedom. This is what brings tolerance, if you want to call it that, okay? True tolerance, all right? And unity among the body of Christ when they have one Bible. But I went to the website here. I'm going to show you a couple of things on the Common English Bible's website to prove what I've been telling you, that it's Catholic conspiracy that's bringing out these new versions like this ridiculous garbage here. Let's look first at the endorsements. I'm going to show you one here by a woman, uh, Mary Saylor. Look what she says. For most of my life, I've been an active member in the major denominations, including the mainline Protestant churches and Roman Catholic Church. Oh, boy. So you have a woman who's Protestant and Roman Catholic, See, counter-reformation, bring back all religions under the authority of Roman Catholicism. You say, well, that's just an endorsement. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, think about that. Just keep that in mind. Let's look at the board of editors for the Common English Bible. The first one here, David L. Peterson. Look what it says. He now serves on the editorial boards of the Journal of Biblical Literature and the Catholic Biblical Quarterly. Yeah. So you have a Protestant and Catholic guy there. And we're not going to go down through. You get on the website and look at all the other apostates on there. I mean, whatever. But here's where it gets really interesting. Let's look at the list of translators for the Common English Bible. Let's look at these. And we'll see if the conspiracy really is true. Here you have 500 persons from 22 faith traditions participated in the, in the development of the CEB translation, which includes 107 translators, 10 editors, and 77 reading group leaders. Let's go down through the list here. You have Mark Boda, Baptist. Jeannie Brown, Baptist General Conference. Go down three names there. The fourth name under that one, Raymond Collins, the Catholic University of America. And it lists their religion over here, Roman Catholic Church. Protestants and Catholics working together on a Bible version. Look at the one right under him, John J. Collins, Yale University, Roman Catholic Church. Right there it is. Catholics sitting on the board of translators of a supposedly Protestant Bible version. Unbelievable. And it goes down through, you can see Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, the whole thing. Again, get on the website if you want to look up all the details. But let's go down to a couple more names here. Carol Dempsey, University of Portland, Roman Catholic Church. Okay, now look at this one down here. Steve Fowle, we'll slide over here, it says Episcopal Church, but look where he was educated at. Loyola College in Maryland. He's a Jesuit. Loyola College? I mean, come on. And he's working in the Episcopal Church. Hmm, interesting. Go down a couple more names. Michael Gorman, St. Mary's Seminary and University. And look what his religion is. His denomination, United Methodist Church. Isn't that interesting? Trained at a Roman Catholic University, yet he works in a Protestant church. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. Next, we'll go to Daniel Harrington, Weston Jesuit School of Theology, 
Roman Catholic Church. Oh, you crazy King James only people. You're a cult. You're conspiracy theorists. Hey, buddy, explain that. Explain it. There's a Jesuit, openly professing Jesuit on the team of translators. It's not a conspiracy anymore. It's right out in the open. The counter-reformation to destroy the King James Bible. And why do they attack it with their video? It's obvious that they were attacking the King James Bible. Sure, they didn't name it, but, I mean, come on. What other Bible says, thus saith the Lord? It's ridiculous. Right under that one. Patrick Harton, Gonzaga University, Roman Catholic Church. Go down a couple. Clayton Jefford, United Church of Christ. And look where he's educated. St. Mainrod School of Theology. Look it up on the internet. It's a Roman Catholic. Bunch of monks standing around. Go down a couple more. Uh, Luke Timothy Johnson, John Keltner, both Roman Catholic Church. Down a couple more. Nathan McDonald, St. Mary's College, University of St. Andrews. And look at his denomination, Baptist. Yeah. Go down a few more. Fime Perkins, Roman Catholic Church. Anathia Portier Young, Roman Catholic Church. Go down through, down through, down through. Uh, Swing, I, Yang, whatever, Roman Catholic Church. Randall, Blakey, Roman Catholic Church. As a group leader. <clears throat> and I guess that's it for the list. But you need to realize, there are 12 openly professing Roman Catholics on the translation team. I just proved it. And by the, the way, another one is the New Living Translation. Okay, you can see right here from their website, there's also a Roman Catholic sitting on the translation team. So you people wonder why I get so upset about these new versions, these new perversions, okay? The, NIV, I've said this thing time and time again, the NIV was translated partly at a Roman Catholic University, the University of Salamanca in Spain. It's a conspiracy. Okay? They are conspiring to get rid of this book right here. You can't deny it. If you deny it, it's because you have a problem with the truth. They shall turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, unto lies, the Bible says. You better get a hold of this book right here, and you better stand for this book right here. People say, what, why? People say, why are you so much against the Roman Catholic Church? Well, I'll tell you why I'm against the Roman Catholic Church, because I study their books, I study their catechisms and, and their writings and things like that. The Catholic Church believes that they are the one true church and all others are heretics. So you know what the Catholic Church means? Them getting back into power, it means the end of religious freedom. It means either you go along with their beliefs, either you submit to their ecumenical system, or you're gone. You're finished. And the Bible says in the tribulation coming up that people are going to be killed for the word of God. And by the way, how could they be slain in the future for the word of God if we don't have it anymore? Okay, here's the word of God. And in the future, these wicked ecumenical type people, they're getting more and more and more anti-King James Bible. And there's a lot of Jesuits that are coming out with this philosophy. Okay, they are now producing new versions. It's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. And you better submit to it, okay? You better understand it. You better say, I'm getting away from this junk right here, and I'm going to return to the King James Bible. If you are saved, this is where you need to take your stand, not over here. And by the way, when this thing comes out, they're going to be including the Apocrypha as part of the inspired text. You better get right. There's not much time left. You better get right with the Lord.